The state of the settled systems at the start of Starfield is a relatively peaceful one. Sure, ecliptic mercenaries, spacers, pirates, and zealots roam the cosmos, but the settled systems are safe from any major conflicts or wars. However, this wasn't always the case. In fact, less than 20 years before the start of the game, the universe had just witnessed humanity's bloodiest battle to date. This was the colony war between the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective. But how did we go from a galaxy at odds to relative peace in such a short time? And how did this conflict even come to be in the first place? Well, let's talk about it. This is Conflict Among the Stars. Heads up, there will be some spoilers, and I should note that, as always, there are biases with information presented in-game. Both factions will of course do their best to paint themselves in the best light. I've done my best to be as impartial as possible. Let's get into it. To get some proper context for the events leading up to the Colony War, we need to go back. Back to the 50s. The 2150s, that is. In the year 2150, Earth's scientists predicted that the planet's magnetic field would collapse in on itself, leaving the atmosphere, along with the gases to sustain human life, to dissipate into space. As one might expect, this would leave Earth uninhabitable. In response to this looming threat to humanity, the many nations of Earth banded together with hopes of finding a new planet to colonize and settle. This mass exodus of humanity's first home would mark a significant milestone in human achievement, ushering in an era of space travel, exploration, and colonization. Societies, cultures, and economies would be redefined to fit a multi-system model, rather than a planetary one. In 2159, three years after humanity's arrival in the Alpha Centauri system, the United Colonies would be formed. UC, as it was shortened to, would be the first interstellar government to have formed in what is known as the Settled Systems. The UC would aim to provide its citizens with three things, opportunity, security, and peace. However, not everyone was appreciative of the United Colonies' efforts. Some folks didn't want to live under an established republic. They wanted freedom. This would lead to the Centaurius Proclamation, a law that provided the formal framework for UC citizens to settle distant planets and form their own sovereign powers. In 2167, a former astrophysicist from Wyoming, Solomon Coe, would discover a new system, naming it the Cheyenne System. Coe would be the first human to set foot on the planet Aquila, and, with the help of other colonists, would found Aquila City. 21 years later, in 2187, Ko would invite the planet of Voli and its capital city Neon to join a defense pact. The next year, this alliance would be officially formalized, thus establishing the Settled System's second major faction, the Free Star Collective. But as humans tend to do, it wouldn't be long before these two factions would come to war marking the first major inter-system conflict between humans. In 2194, the United Colonies moved a medical star station dubbed the Clinic into orbit around the planet Dipala in the Narian system. Concerned that this move meant that Narian would lose its independence to the UC, the colonists demanded the station be removed. When the UC refused this request, the system voted to join the Free Star Collective, who quickly sent a military force to protect the local colonists in 2195. The UC would escalate this conflict by sending a fleet to Narion, and in response, the Free Star Collective would send their own fleet, thus starting the Narion War. Dragging on for two decades, from 2196 to 2216, both factions weren't without significant losses. If we look at the conflict from a manpower point of view, it's clear that the United Colonies won, as the Free Star Collective lost their entire fleet of ships. However, two decades of fighting took a toll on those back home, 
who now viewed their leaders as brutal aggressors and demanded the war to end in a humane conclusion. The Narian War officially ended with the Treaty of Narion. According to the treaty, the UC would cede control of Narion and the clinic to the Freestar Collective in exchange for the mineral rights for several planets and an agreement that all major factions in the settled systems would limit their colonies to three systems each. The UC would have Alpha Centauri, Sol, and Wolf. The Freestar Collective would have Cheyenne, Narion, and Voli. However, the Narian War would only be the first of many conflicts between these two factions. It would be nearly a century later that these two groups would have their largest feud to date. It would be in 2307, 91 years after the Treaty of Narion was signed, that the Freestar Collective would start their farming efforts on the planet of Vesta in the Lunara system. The next year, the United Colonies would formally object to the Freestar's farming in Lunara, claiming that they were in violation of the Three System Expansion Cap. This dispute would start diplomatically with representatives from both nations talking it out, but as these discussions and debates became more unproductive, the United Colonies decided to take action. Yeah, they didn't really beat the aggressor's allegations from the Narian War. A UC fleet would lay siege to Vesta, killing all of its defenders in the process. The brief but brutal colony war was now upon us. Armed with their mighty navy and bioengineered battle aliens, the United Colonies sought to finish what they started during the Narion War. Equally matched with their ragtag space militia and powerful mechs, the Free Star were looking to secure their future in these settled systems, independent from UC's reign. Nearly every human colony in these settled systems was affected by the colony war, whether it be from space or planetary combat, wartime production, or suffering from the economic pains of war, every human colony shared in a unique suffering brought on from the conflict. Mothers would lose their sons and daughters, children would lose their parents, every human would be affected. One of the earliest and bloodiest firefights in the colony war took us back to the Narion system. Hoping to use the planet of Nira as a forward command post, the United Colonies deployed forces to occupy it. In response, the Freestar Collective would continuously send wave after wave of troops and mechs in an attempt to reclaim the planet. The conflict has been described as ground zero for Xeno warfare. Ultimately, the Battle of Nira resulted in irreparable damages to the planet's surface. By the start of the game, Nira stands as a desolate rock, littered with destroyed ships, mechs, and Xeno weapons. Despite having the more formal military, the United Colonies would find themselves facing a more defiant and dire Freestar Collective. Losing the colony war could put an end to the Narian Treaty and even the Centaurus Proclamation, leaving all of humanity under the rule of the UC. During the war, the United Colonies came under threat by a new party, a newly built supply hub built on Ptolemon II in the Ptolemon system suffered a terramorph outbreak, the largest in recorded human history. Mysterious in nature, UC Command first attempted to cull the Horde. When this proved fruitless, the ruthless Fleet Admiral Ve Victus would infamously order the bombing of the Londinian spaceport, hoping to stop the outbreak for good. Countless civilians would find themselves trapped in the city, waiting for their inevitable demise at the hands, appendages, of the Terramorphs. Still, despite this supply line setback, the United Colonies was on the offensive. The UC Navy would send their fleet to Freestar's home system, Cheyenne, resulting in the Colony War's culminating battle. In 2311, three years after the UC's objection to Freestar's farming on Vesta, the Battle of Cheyenne would mark the end of the Colony War. Having been equally matched thus far, the Freestar Collective's guerrilla tactics and militia navy got the better of the UC Navy. The Freestar Collective would achieve a surprising but decisive victory, opening a pathway that allowed for the war to come to a peaceful end. Both the United Colonies and Freestar Collective would sign a new peace treaty, 
This was dubbed the Armistice. Under the Armistice Treaty, both powers agreed to limit the size of their navies, Xeno weapons and mechs became outlawed, and all Xeno and mech research would be archived, stored in the Armistice Archives in New Atlantis. The Armistice Archives would be guarded by representatives from all Armistice factions. Access to the Archives would only be permitted by unanimous agreement between the Archive Ambassadors, and any unauthorized access of the Archives would be seen as an act of aggression. While it is commonly believed that the Freestar Collective allowed the Armistice Archives to be built in the capital city of the United Colonies as a sign of trust, others believe that the Archives serve as a constant reminder of the United Colonies' brutal defeat. Furthermore, the Freestar Collective demanded that the UC's active commanders be tried for war crimes. They were accused of firing upon unarmed civilian vessels. In the interest of keeping the peace, the UC agreed. UC Navy Fleet Admiral Ve Victus, UC Army General Indira Rastogi, and UC Navy Commander Henry Durant would be tried, found guilty, and executed. Unbeknownst to Freestar though, Ve Victus would be spared and imprisoned for life, but remain as a UC military advisor, leading investigations on tracking other war criminals. On the other side of things, many officers of the Freestar Collective's 1st Cavalry Division would be sentenced to 20 years in prison for their respective war crimes. On a side note for clarity, a third major faction, House Varun, I know we haven't mentioned them, but that's probably best saved for another video. Um, while not participating in the colony war themselves, they also agreed to abide by the terms of the armistice. After three bloody and tragic years of war, these settled systems were now once again at peace. And while this peace has been somewhat uneasy at times, it has allowed for these settled systems to rebuild. No longer are humanity's two largest factions at each other's throats. While the scars of battle remain evident amongst many colony war survivors and veterans, they serve as reminders of humanity's resilience and the price paid for peace. In this new era of cooperation and order, we find humanity looking to the stars once more, not as battlegrounds for destruction, but as uncharted regions ready to be explored. It would be 19 years after the colony war that an unsuspecting excavator would come upon a strange artifact on Vectera. This discovery would lead humanity into the starfield once more. Thanks for listening. This is my first long video about Starfield. Let me know if you want more. If you like the video, be sure to share and subscribe. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. I'm Francois Fanon, but most know me as Ve Victus. I was an admiral during the Colony War. One of its great villains, if you believe the slate. I was to be executed for my crimes. But the previous regime deemed me 